Let's talk about biodynamic wines yes. and organic wines and why are they different and why are they superior to other wines that we might find on the shelves? Well, one thing about wine is that you don't have to say on the wine label what's actually in that bottle. Mm. So a lot of people are under the impression that it's just, just grapes, just grapes that have been fermented and that's all that's in the wine. That is not true, especially in big mass produced like bulk production wines. Basically anything with a cute little critter on the label or you know, a, a tasty pastry on the label. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, your cupcakes, your barefoots, mm -hmm. your yellowtails. There's a reason why they're so cheap. Mm -hmm. And when you're making a bulk wine like that, you're usually starting with subpar fruit. I mean, that's it's cheap. It's kind of the leftover fruit from, you know, other bottlings that you know didn't make it into the premium bottles. Um, and to make it taste good, you have to do a lot to it. So you'll have to add, you know, to add anything from adding alcohol, adding additional sugar to create a boost the mm. alcohol content kind of artificially. And they're adding acidifiers, they're adding tannin, and sometimes they're throwing a bunch of oak chips in there to make it taste, you know, rounder and, and This is fuller. like not, this is not what we signed up for. Oh yeah. Um, and then finally, they'll add a bunch of water to kind of stretch it out to create a greater volume. Mm. And then oftentimes they'll add artificial color as well. Wow. And so you're, you're ending up with a glass that tastes decent, but it's basically junk food in a glass. Mm -hmm. And this is a little controversial in the wine world because it's kind of false advertising. People don't really know what they're putting in their body. And you know, if you make the decision to like buy a bag of Doritos, you know, mm -hmm. they're delicious and you're craving them. And at least you know that you're eating junk food and you're making you know an it's educated bad for you. decision. You know it's bad for you. Um, but with wines, there's just a lot out, out there that's just not the most responsible decision that you can make in terms of what you're putting in your body. And then you also have, you know, the environmental impact that mm -hmm. these winemakers are, are, are making. So to me, there's so many bottles that are made by producers that are so respectful of the environment and they're having such a pure approach to their winemaking mm -hmm. that if I can support them and put my $15 in their pocket versus some mass production winery, why wouldn't I? Yes. They're a little bit harder to find. Um, sometimes they don't have mass distribution like mm -hmm. the big guys, but um, that's when you want to find you know, your little wine shops, your cute little cafes where you know that every single bottle is hand selected by the owner or by their mm -hmm. team of sommeliers. And, but what you're getting about, more integrity there. And what about, or, there are so many organic wines mm -hmm. out there now that are certified organic, but I imagine that there are wines out there that technically are organic, but they didn't have the money to pay for the certification yeah. or something like that. How do we discover what those are? That's exactly right. Um, essentially, the definition of organic wine is that in the farming process in the vineyard, there's been no synthetic chemicals used. Mm -hmm. No herbicides, no pesticides, no fungicides, like all of the sides. Like, no sides. Um, <laughs> sides are bad. Sides are bad. And so, uh, especially in Europe, there's a lot of winemakers that, you know, their family has been making wine for eight generations, and they're using the same practices they always have. Mm -hmm. They've never used synthetic chemicals. They've always done the responsible thing. But exactly, they don't always want to pay for the certification, which is extremely expensive. Mm -hmm. Then you have to get certified in Europe, and then again in the U.S. Yes. And just to get that little, like, seal stamp of approval, and a lot of the Europeans are like, eh. We don't care. We're making our wine. Mm -hmm. We're going to do what I'm going to do. So honestly, that's when you really want to make friends with the clerk at your local wine shop. It's like the number one. So they know the deal. You. They know the background they know the of all they of the wines. Know every single bottle in the shop, which ones are organic, mm -hmm. which ones are practicing organic, but not certified, mm. who's sustainable. And, you know, people are so afraid to ask for help when it comes to wine. We yeah. all think we're supposed to know everything. You know, I would never go into like, you know, Best Buy and like mm -hmm. pretend to know everything <laughs> about hard drives yeah. or something. You know, of mm -hmm. course I would ask the guy, you know, what do you recommend? Mm -hmm. um, this is what I need, this is my budget. You know, tell me what the deal is. And with wine, like for some reason, just people feel so intimidated and they feel so afraid to just ask. And to anyone that works in the wine industry, our favorite thing in the universe is when someone says, Hey, I don't know anything. Mm -hmm. Tell me, teach me. And you're such a wealth me. of knowledge, you want to use it. You want to use it. Mm -hmm. And real people that are really, really invested and passionate about wine just live to share that knowledge. So, you know, my advice to all the fancy hippies out there, just don't be afraid to ask. And also there's a lot of great like wine apps for your smartphone oh, nowadays. There are. Too. What are some of the yeah. apps we can download? Um, there's Delectable, which is a big one okay. where you can actually follow your favorite like 
wine people and see what they're drinking. Oh. Um, so it's more of like a social interaction, but there's things like um, Vivino, Hello Vino, even Instagram is actually great. But, um, you know, today it's so easy to just walk in a wine shop, you find a Calpelling label, you can, you know, pull up your smartphone and do your research on your own, which mm -hmm. is a way that I feel like the game is really changing um, in the wine world in a really good way. You guys way. can just go to the lushlifeny.com when you're in the wine shop and you can yes. figure it all out. Yes, come see my site, I'll tell you everything you need to know. Okay. Biodynamic wine versus organic wine. I know often I used to think they were the same thing, mm -hmm. but they're not. Yes. Why? Okay, biodynamics takes organic practices and just like cranks it up, kicks it up a notch. But the idea behind biodynamics is that the whole vineyard is an ecosystem and every single or organism in the vineyard is contributing to like the circle of life in the vineyard. So for example, they might use like some animal byproducts mm -hmm. in the treatment of the vineyard. Mm. So things like manure or horns or calves of different animals. But the idea behind that is that the plants are feeding the animals and then mm -hmm. the animals are feeding the plants oh. and everything is coming back to the earth. Mm. So it's just a cycle of nature. Um, they also only farm according to the calendar of the planets, the sun, the moon, like where everything oh, is in the solar that's system. That's pretty groovy. Which is super groovy. It's a little hippy dippy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but it's really interesting if you think about how like, you know, the moon, you know, can move the ocean. Mm -hmm. Same idea. Um, in the biodynamic calendar, you have planting days, then you have certain days that are harvesting days. And you might only plant on a day when the moon is in a position to like pull all the fluids and nutrients from the earth mm -hmm. in a certain way. It's gonna pull them up through the vines to kind of feed the vines. Wow, anyway, sounds like a lot of work. It's very cosmic. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, kind of the cool thing is that no one really knows why it works. Mm -hmm. But when you taste it by a dynamic wine, there's like no denying that there's just like a vitality and a life to these wines mm -hmm. that are so incredible. It's, it's a mystery. But now if it's biodynamic, does that mean it's automatically organic or are there ones that aren't organic? Uh, it may or may not be certified organic, mm -hmm, but, but it, it definitely they're is. They're practicing organic. Oh, so that's good to know. So we know no matter what, if it's biodynamic, it's organic. Yeah, they're not using boat. any synthetic chemicals. Got it. They're using a lot of natural things, um, even like chamomile, mm -hmm. nettle root, um, dandelions, and, and also some of the animal products that we talked about too. So it's but almost medicinal. It is, yeah. They're right? actually, basically what they're doing is they're, create, they're creating like tea mm -hmm. of these different, you know, substances in nature, and then they're spraying them out over the vines. So let's talk screw caps. Yes. Because people see a screw cap and they think, oh, well, this is a bad wine. Mm -hmm. It needs to have a cork, but that's not true anymore, is it? In every other industry, technology is like so coveted. Everyone wants the newest iPhone, like the second it comes mm -hmm. out, right? You want what's new, what's fresh, what's the innovation. The wine world is like, a dinosaur. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, it, whatever they were doing a thousand years ago in mm -hmm. terms of bottling, and it, people want the same thing. So, you want It seems tradition. like there are a lot of people who are keeping it there too, yes. or trying, trying to, to keep, keep it there. there. The tradition of the cork and the bottle and the whole romance behind that. So, clearly, that the cork does have a function. Um, wines that are meant to age and mature over a long span of time, a cork can be amazing because it's bringing in a little bit of trace amount of oxygen, which is what's helping the wine evolve. Mm -hmm. However, um, there's some bacteria that can live in those corks. They can be faulty, and then that bacteria can invade the wine, and uh, that's when you have, you might mm -hmm. have heard the term like a corked wine. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very specific type of spoilage. It's a wine that tastes like maybe moldy cardboard. Right. And as many as, you know, eight to 10% of all bottles that are uh, closed with a natural cork can be tainted. And so um, you gotta think as a winemaker, if you wanna preserve the integrity of your wine, you wanna avoid cork taint at all costs. So a lot mm -hmm. of winemakers started using these screw cup closures. And they're, I think they're fabulous. I'm a huge fan of them. They're very, very eco-friendly as well. They use very, very little um, material. And you know the natural cork supply is dwindling. Mm -hmm. And plus, you know, they're convenient. You, you don't need a corkscrew. You yeah. Take it on a picnic, you know, drink a bottle of it, you know, screw the cap back on the bottle, mm -hmm. throw it back in the fridge. Uh, Will it last longer than if you put a cork on? Um, I would say once a bottle is open, regardless of whether it's with a screw cap, seal it back with mm -hmm. a cork, a synthetic cork, um, you always have this kind of the same amount of life left in it. Mm -hmm. Probably maybe two or three days for a red. Okay. Whites, maybe four or five days you can mm -hmm. stretch. Um, 
I always put an open bottle in the fridge, even if it's a red wine, it'll help it last a little bit longer. Mm. Um, but with the screw caps too, a lot of you know new modern winemakers are choosing this technology, and you'll always see it in like the cool hip guys in the U.S. and New Zealand and Australia, mm-hmm. and conversely. There's a lot of people making kind of subpar wine and putting a natural cork in it, trying to kind of fool you into thinking it's actually higher mm-hmm. quality than it is. So I kind of appreciate the guys that are like, you know what? I stand behind my wine. It's a great practice. This is what I'm choosing to do. And they're doing it. You know, is it the right choice for a wine that has to age for decades? Mm-hmm. Maybe not, but it's also kind of too soon to tell. Um, again, this technology is pretty new, so we don't have a you know a bottle that's had a screw cap on it for a hundred years as a control yeah. that we can kind of like see what happens. We're gonna redo this interview when we're about ninety exactly, and we're gonna sit down and we're gonna figure out if it worked or not.